In this video, we want to prove two important theorems for characterizing minimax polynomials. The first one is called uh, the lavalier poisson theorem. It tells that uh, given a continuous function f on a closed interval a, b, and given an nth degree polynomial p, suppose that the difference f minus p uh, changes its sign n plus 1 times, in the sense that there are n plus 2 points, x0, through x n plus 1, at which this difference uh, alternates its sign. So uh, look at this picture here. Here we have this f, the red curve is f, and this polynomial, let's say green one, the polynomial is p, and there's going to be these points x0, x1, x2, and so on, n plus 2 points, such that this difference alternates its sign. So here we have positive, over here we have negative, and then we have positive and so on. Now if you have this situation, then the error of the minimax polynomial of degree n, which is this quantity, cannot be smaller than the minimum of these gaps. So let's call these gaps. So to prove this, suppose that there is a polynomial q uh, let's say q is our minimax polynomial, and the error is actually smaller than the minimum. Then we write p minus q in this way, and evaluate this difference at the points x, j. Then the first part here, p minus f, will be of this form, minus 1 to the power j times some e j. And the second part, f minus q, so we assume that f minus q, actually here I have made a mistake, this is not minimum, of course this should be maximum here. So uh, maximum of f minus q over the interval is smaller than the minimum of these ej's. So that means this is going to be smaller than ej in absolute value. So that means these are non-zero and they take differing signs as j takes values from 0 to n plus 1. So uh, we are talking about a situation like this. p minus q here have positive sign, over here we have negative sign, positive, negative, and so on. We have uh, n plus 2 such oscillations. That means we will have n plus 1 zeros, at least and p is an nth degree polynomial. Uh, p and q both are nth degree polynomial, and if this difference is zero at n plus one different distinct points, these two polynomials must be equal to each other. And that contradicts the assumption that f minus q is strictly smaller than minimum of ej, and it proves the theorem. Our next theorem is Chebyshev's oscillation theorem. It characterizes minimax polynomials. Now p is uh, an nth degree minimax polynomial for this given function f. If and only if the difference f minus p takes these values, f minus the norm of f minus p with different signs, with alternate change of sign, at least n plus 2 times in the interval. And moreover, this un uh, minimax polynomial is unique. First, let's prove the if part. So we have now f minus p taking these values n plus 2 times. So we can use the de lavalier poisson theorem. Uh, by the theorem, now those values ej's are this norm. So that means the error of the minimax polynomial must be not smaller than that those value each minimum of those values ej because this is the error of the minimax or the best approximation polynomial you can't have strictly smaller error here so they must be equal and the equal means p is actually a minimax polynomial because it realizes the best possible error okay now in the other direction let's give name to this error delta now, what we want to prove is, if it is a minimax polynomial, 
then we're going to have these values n plus 2 times with alternating signs. Let's say uh, we take these values uh, only k times, where k is less or equal to n plus 1 and bigger or equal to 2. We know that k must be at least 2, because if it is a minimax polynomial, then it must oscillate at least once. So assume that this happens k times, where k is now strictly smaller than n of n plus 2. Then we're going to uh, introduce this new points size. Uh, let's look at this picture. Here we have depicted the difference f minus p by the red curve. So at this points x1, x2, x3, and so on. Then we're going to pick these points xi1 through xi k in this way. On the interval between 0 and xi1, in this interval here, f minus p is, of course, bigger than minus delta, but smaller than delta minus epsilon for some strictly positive number epsilon. So that means this xi1, we choose xi1 to be smaller than x2, somewhere here, and smaller than any points where uh, this difference f minus p is exactly equal to delta. So if you choose uh, xi1 that way, then we're going to have this estimate on the interval 0 xi1. And we want to choose xi2 now, the next point, such that on the interval xi1, xi2, we have, okay, f minus p is smaller than delta, that this is always true, but we want that f minus p is bigger than minus delta plus epsilon. So that means we want xi2 to be smaller than x3 and also smaller than any point at which f minus p is equal to minus delta plus epsilon. So that way we can uh, make sure that f minus p is bigger than minus delta plus epsilon. And so on we choose x3 such that on the interval xc2, xc3, we have f minus p is smaller than delta minus epsilon. And so on, we choose uh, those points. Then we're going to define this, this polynomial r, multiplying these monomials. So meaning that this r is going to be 0 at these points, xi1, xi2, and so on, up to xi k minus 1. Why this number is k minus 1? Because, well, we have k points, right? We have um, x is running from x1 to xk, and uh, xi's are in between these points, so one less. We have uh, k minus 1 points, xi. I'm going to make a small correction here. We're going to define our r with some sign in front, such that for large negative x, r is going to be positive. So in other words, this on this picture, actually, this would be minus r here. We want r to be positive over here in, in the large negative region. Now what we want to do is we're actually going to show that we can make this approximation p better. So p was supposed to be a minimax polynomial. Uh, we define this new polynomial q by subtracting from p a small positive multiple of r. And we're going to assume that this alpha is so small that the uniform norm of alpha r is smaller than epsilon over 2 on the interval 0, 1. So the difference f minus q can be written in this way, f minus p plus alpha r. In particular, r is positive on the interval 0, psi 1. We look at the first group of intervals. Here we have f minus p is bigger than minus delta. So just add alpha r, we get this on the left hand side, on the right hand side, because we're adding alpha r and alpha r is smaller than epsilon over 2, we get f minus q smaller than delta minus epsilon over 2. Now on the second set of intervals, we get similar bound on the left hand side, because r is negative on those intervals, so that this epsilon will become plus epsilon over 2 in the worst case. For the upper bound, again, taking into account that r is negative, 
we get f minus q smaller than delta minus alpha times r. Now this shows that these bounds delta minus epsilon over 2 minus delta plus epsilon over 2. So they definitely show that at least on those sides the error is strictly smaller than delta. Now for the other side here because r is strictly positive in the open interval uh, between let's say for example 0 xi1 and xi2 and xi3 and on those intervals uh, r is strictly negative we're going to get this er side of the error strictly smaller than delta also so that would that shows that now the error between f and q is strictly smaller than delta uh, which contradicts the fact that p was minimax polynomial so uh, f minus p must really change sign n plus one times or are there going to be n plus two points with differing signs now finally we want to prove the uniqueness part of the theorem so let's say we have two minimax polynomials then define the third one by just taking the average if you do this and look at the error between f and r you can use triangle inequality to show that f minus r is smaller than the, the error of the minimax polynomial which shows that r is also a minimax polynomial because r is a minimax polynomial this difference f minus r will take this value at n plus two distinct points this means at those points f minus p will be equal to f minus q uh, because in this inequality on the left hand side we're going to have en that means these two each of these two must be equal to en and that's only possible if either f minus p is equal to minus f minus q or f minus p equal to f minus q now if f minus q is equal to minus f minus q then that would mean that p plus q is equal to 2f which means r is equal to f at those points which means that the difference cannot be equal to n it will be zero at those points so this situation is ruled out that means f minus p is equal to f minus q now that means p is equal to q at those points which are n plus 2 in number p and q are nth degree polynomials and they agree at n plus 2 distinct points that means p is equal to q and that proves uniqueness